like, share, subscribe. Hey y'all, welcome back. On question 19, it's asking for us to write an equation of the line that passes through the points negative 2, 1, and 1, 2. So I'm going to show you how to sort of do this the right way, which is to actually come up with the equation just from the points. But I also want to emphasize at the end that you can actually solve this one out by just plugging in these numbers into the equation. So if you're not sure how to write the equation, you can still get away with answering this correctly. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. So first, let's do it the sort of the quote unquote correct way. So I'm going to write this equation in what's known as point slope form because I'm given a point and I'm not given the y-intercept, unfortunately, but I am implicitly given the slope. Not explicitly, but implicitly. It doesn't actually tell me specifically what the slope is, but it does give me two points for which I can find the slope. So uh, I'm going to do a little uh, work out to the side here. Um, so to find the slope, the slope is going to equal the change in y divided by the change in x. So uh, let's see here. There we go. Um, do we have a delta symbol here somewhere? There we go. So change in y divided by change in x. So the way that I like to calculate slope, and there is a formula for it, it's y2 minus y1 equals x2 minus x1, but I'm not really a big formula guy unless you have to use one. Um, instead, I like to think about it like this. And so if the two points I know are negative 2 and 1, uh, comma 1, and 1, comma 2, I can, instead of trying to plug everything into a formula and simplifying it, um, I can just ask myself, like, how do I get from one point to the next? What do I have to add to the y's? What do I have to add to the x's? And that will be our change in y and change of x. So my change in y here, I'm going to ask myself, how do I get from the first y value to the second y value? How do I get from 1 to 2? And so to get from 1 to 2, I need to add 1. So my change in y is 1. To get the change in x, I want to ask myself, how do I get from negative 2 to 1? And to get from negative 2 to 1, you would add 3. So the change in x is 3. So my slope here is going to be 1 over 3 or 1 third. Okay, so they, they sort of give you the tools that you need to find the slope. Um, so you do need to find it, right? So let's go back to the point-slope form of the equation. The format for this is y minus y1. Uh, let's see here. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Now the parameters here, the m is the slope. The x1, y1 represents just any point on the line. Okay, so m is the slope, and the x1, y1 is just going to be any point on the line. So you can pick either negative 2, 1, or 1, 2. Just kind of use whichever one seems easier. Given the choice, I like to go with the one that has more positive numbers, because then I don't have to worry about minus a negative but it really doesn't make a huge difference. So you just kind of pick whichever one looks better to you and then start substituting in all the numbers. So we already found the slope, right? We found it over here to the side. It was one third. And then for x1, y1, like I said, you could use either one of these two points, but I'm going to use one comma zero. I'm oh, sorry, one comma two. So my x1 is going to be one and my y1 is going to be two. So we have the equation here. But as you look through these answer choices, you'll notice none of these are in point-slope form. They're all in what we call standard form, meaning that they're in this AX plus BY equals C format. So what we need to do is we need to manipulate this equation to get it into this form. Uh, and so to start that process, we're going to distribute the one-third. Okay, so I'm going to multiply one-third by X and one-third by negative one. So that's going to give you y minus 2 equals 1 third times x is just going to be 1 third x, and 1 third times negative 1 is just going to be negative 1 third. Next, I'm going to add 2 to both sides of the equation. So I'm going to add 2 to this side of the equation, 
and add 2 to this side of the equation. Now, you're going to get a calculator on the CLEP test. So if you're trying to add and subtract fractions, honestly, I would just recommend you put that in the calculator. Um, you know, you don't want to get caught knowing how to work a problem and then mess it up because you, you messed up the arithmetic, right? Especially if you have access to a calculator. So I would definitely type this in if you're not sure how to do that, or even if you are sure how to, how to add fractions. I still would recommend using the calculator. So we've got 2 minus a third. 2 would be 6 thirds. Minus 1 third would be 5 thirds. So this would be plus 5 thirds. We're almost there. Notice how none of the answer choices have fractions in there. And that's because generally when you're, when you're writing an equation in standard form, and it kind of just depends on what definition you're using, but the, I think the most accepted definition requires that you have no fractions as any of the coefficients. So to clear these fractions, I'm just going to multiply the entire equation by 3 because both of those um, denominators are 3. So I'm going to multiply basically everything by 3. So when I do that, I'll get 3y equals 1 third times 3 would be 1, so 1x, or just x, and then plus 5. So my last, or I guess not the last thing, but the second to last thing to do here is to get the x's and y's on the same side. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. And that'll give me, let's see here, negative x plus 3y is equal to 5. And again, I'm looking at those answer choices. I don't see negative x plus 3y equals 5. That's not one of any of the options. Well, if you're writing in standard form, um, most textbooks will say that not only can you not have any fractions as any of the coefficients, but the leading coefficient a lot of the times needs to be positive. So what I can do is I can multiply everything by negative 1 to flip the signs on each one of those terms and force that leading coefficient to be positive. So negative 1 times 1 would just be 1. So we have 1x minus 3y equals negative 5. So our answer here, and we can find that in our choices, is going to be, let's see here, d. Now, at the beginning, I said that, you know, if the algebra gets too complicated for you, you just kind of lose track of how to work this out. You can always use the answer choices here in this problem uh, to kind of figure it out. So what I would do is, if I'm just lost and I'm not sure what to do, is start with one of the points, like say 1, 2, and just substitute them into all the equations and see which one is true. So like if I put that into A, 1 plus 3 times 2, well, 3 times 2 would be 6, so 1 plus 6 would be 7. It's not 1, so I know A is not right. But then I go to the next one and say 1 plus 3 times 2, that's still 7, so it can't be B. 1 plus 3 times 2, still 7, so it can't be C. 1 minus 6 would be negative 5, so that's a possibility. And then check the next one. 1 minus 6 is not negative 1. So we don't even have to check the second point. If you just plug in 1, 2 to all these, the only one that works is D. That can actually be faster. And, you know, you saw kind of all the work that went in to coming up with this equation. You know, on, on a problem like this, I'm probably more likely to just skip and avoid all the algebra and just start plugging in numbers, you know, and see which one works. So just know that that is a strategy for getting some of these right. Well, that's it for number 19. Thanks for watching, and y'all have a great day.